Hello, this is Fred coming with another Font Forge tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about variable fonts. These are becoming very popular. They are based on the old TrueType GX standard, and the standards are actually quite similar. Um, unfortunately, as far as I know, Font Forge does not have the best support for making variable fonts. It doesn't have native support yet. It doesn't understand the design space um, format. So there's still work to be done. But I was able to create a variable font today in FontForge and I used just a few third party open source tools. So it is possible to make a variable font using only free software. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and explain it right now. So what I've done here is I've created two files, lightq.sfd and boldq.sfd. And both of these files contain glyphs from Cantorel, Cantorel Lite and Cantorel Extra Bold. I chose Cantorel because the glyphs are very good for interpolation. And let me show you what I mean by that. We can see that the Bezier splines are simple and they have the right number of points and each um, letter here, the Q, it has the same number of points and the same point ordering and the same point directionality. So we can easily interpolate these two by going to element, interpolate fonts. Uh, sorry, we have to open. Yeah, this is something that um, I often miss. You have to open the two fonts in the same FontForge instance in the same font for its process to be able to do this. All right, interpolate fonts, 50%, and we get something that looks like a Cantorel regular. Now, there are lots of things that can make interpolation go wrong, and I'll show a few of them. The first one that people often miss is the order of the, um, the Z order, as it's called, of the Bezier splines. Now, for example, if I just click this point right here and I go to element order first. So now the inside spline, which is the hole, right? It's this, it's this, this little guy, see? He makes a hole in the queue. Now that is the first and this is the last, but that's not how it's supposed to be, right? And you, you can see that if I now try to interpolate 50%. Oh, our Q is all messed up. What even is that, right? So little things like that matter a lot. So um, we got to make sure that our Z order of both of these is the same. So why don't we put that last? And then if we do an interpolation, it will work fine. So things like that really matter. Of course, the number of points has to be the same the point order, all of that has to be the same. Um, you know, when, when you're trying to make a multiple master font, <laughs> there's a lot that can go wrong. But anyway, we do have the correct uh, splines here, so we can make one. Unfortunately, like I said, FontForge cannot do it on its own. We need some third-party tools. And I wrote what we need here. So you need to make a virtual environment and you need to install AFDKO and FontMake. AFDKO stands for Adobe Font Developer Kit for OpenType. Pretty sure that's what it stands for. Correct me if I'm wrong. And FontMake is made by Google. So uh, we need both of them. AFDKO, the reason we need it is it includes um, dependencies for this script. And I will quickly show that. All right. So this is a script, and I am not really the author of it. I just edited it. The original source is the RoboFont developers and I will include a link to that in the description for the original source of this. All I did was make some quick tweaks to it to work in our case. 
So what we have here is a family name, Cantarell Q. We have a single axis, a weight axis, which goes from a minimum of zero to a maximum of 1,000. Our sources are lightq.ufo and boldq.ufo, which all that is is just these two SFD files, and I just went file, generate fonts, and named it lightq and generate. That's all I did. So you need at least a Q, a space, and an X. And another thing you need, which I believe to be a bug, is you need a complete OS slash 2 table, or it will not work. You will receive an error. So you have to go to element font info and go to OS slash 2 metrics and just make sure that these are set. And if they're not set, just set them to some value. I don't know re really why that's important. I think it's a bug, and I'll probably open it with the FontMic developers. But yes, that is required. Uh, that's actually why I included a small letter X, because that gets it set by default. Uh, and I set the cap height just by myself, by just looking at the Q and seeing, oh, you know, this point is at 704, so why don't we just call it 700? Um, yeah. All right, so now that we have our two UFO files that we've created from our SFD files, our, we can run this script. And, you know, this script should be pretty easy for you to change to make your own design space. And once you run the script, it's to make design space top pie, you'll receive this design space file. And all it is is just, you know, it's really quite simple. It's just one axis, a weight axis, minimum zero, maximum 100. And then these are the two sources, these two UFOs. And all we have to do is just run our command here. So why don't we do that? All right. Why don't we do that? And I'm also going to... So like I said, you should install AFDKO, and I'm just doing this so that I will get the uh, tools for AFDKO in my path so that I can use them. And the AFDKO page, which I'll put in the description, will tell you how to install it. It's really simple. You just make a virtual environment and you just uh, pip install AFDKO. That's all you got to do. So. I will now run the commands, just to show how it works. All right, so first we make our design space, you know, very simple. And the last one, we use font make, which also, like I said, needs to be installed. Uh, via pip is fine. And we do that to make our cantarell q underscore vf dot ttf file, which is the variable font. And we can actually open that in FontForge because FontForge supports TrueType GX, it actually has some support in the MM menu for um, multiple master fonts. You can see that. It's working on our OpenType 1.8 variable font. And we can actually view all of the sizes here. And we can even, you know, um, here in the font view, we can blend to a new font and, you know, let's say we want a font that's weight 300, right? We can get a Q of weight 300. And um, so FontForge does have some support for opening TrueType GX files, which is the old standard. I don't know to what degree it's compatible with OpenType 1.8. That's an open question, and we're working on it. But there is some support. You can see that FontForge doesn't understand some of the tables, though. It doesn't understand MVAR, HVAR, or STAT. So we might need to work on that, we being the developers. But as soon as you run this font make right here, you'll see it does all of that, and we will get our final Cantarell Q underscore VF. And we can test that that works just by opening a browser. And we can go to this site called 
Axis Praxis. There we go. Axis Praxis. Um, and all we have to do is just drag and drop our new variable font right there, and we can use it right away. I'm trying to see if there's an empty one. An empty one that we can just play around with. Nah. Nah, it's okay. It's alright. Yeah, and there might be an empty one. I just haven't quite found it yet, huh? So, I'm just going to open one of these that I know has a uh, it's not very long. I think it's Ven. Yes. All right. And we are just going to create, we're just going to use uh, this one. So we'll make the font size really big so we can see it. And we will drag and drop our Cantorel Q right there. And we'll just delete all of this. And look at that. Q, 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 X, X, X. And you can see it works. The weight is now variable. Uh, yeah, you know, there's really not much else to say. It works. You'll see there's some artifacts on the screen. Hopefully that won't happen to you. I think that's just because I'm using Chrome and Linux and, you know, maybe my video hardware has some, some little difficulties. But, yeah, you know, there's not really too much else to say. All you got to do is make your two SFTs, make sure that they interpolate correctly, save to UFO, create your design space, uh, using a make design space dot pi and you can just reuse mine I'll put all of these files into a uh, archive that you can use um, you install the tool th two things you need and you just run this command now I'm gonna open a bug about that OS slash two thing it seems to require these and I don't understand why uh, maybe it's not a bug and maybe I'm just ignorant you know these two tables are generated which FontForge doesn't understand so, you know, maybe I'm the one that's wrong. But I will open a bug just to see. And also, for some weird reason, it requires a space. Uh, when I originally went to make this font, I didn't have a space. I just had a Q. So, yeah. But it seems like this is the minimum to make a uh, open type variable font with FontForge. So, yeah, have at it. You have any questions, let me know. I'll provide all these files and... Uh, Happy font founding as always. Thank you very much for watching.